G'day everyone, Jason Haynes here, QPL Rural, another edition of the Soaker, your weekly look at water markets across the Riverina. Well, another dry week has prevailed, but water prices are subdued. There does look like there is a little bit of wet weather ahead of us that will probably count as an autumn break, but we have seen that rice and the corn harvest well underway some decent yields coming out of that space this year which is very encouraging that as i said water prices have dipped again this week now, this is evident particularly in the victorian market where the environmental water holder has announced they're going to be selling some 12,000 megalitres of allocation into that murray system which no doubt will have a negative impact on prices so a quick look around, Murray Zone 6 trading above the choke there at $20 per megalitre. If you're in Zone 7, it's quoted as $62. Zone 10 in that Murray system, $18 per megalitre. Now, if you're in Zone 11 below the choke, New South Wales side is $66. And the Murrumbidgee trading as low as $8 per megalitre. Looks like numbers are around $10 out in that Collie Ambly area, but work on $8 to $10 at the moment. Now, Lachlan... Back at $20 per megalitre if you're a b- upstream of Lake Angelico and still quoted at 20, sorry, $65 per megalitre if you're downstream from Lake Angelico Weir. So supplementary events this week. There's still a little supplementary water running out through that Murrumbidgee system if you're on that Yanko Spur. So really downstream of the Innes Bridge at Jerilderie out to Mullamine and again downstream of the Yanko Bridge in the Yanko system. If you're in the Murray system, well, Murray SUP events are downstream of Wentworth and out to the South Australian border. So in both those cases, still a few days to run there. Now, one update this week from Water New South Wales. They've got the results of their review into Inter Valley trade out of the Murrumbidgee. There was 21 responses and the three take-home messages they've indicated are, number one, equity of access. The majority of submissions suggested that the current method of orders based on receipt when the Inter Valley trade opens is not entirely equitable and could be improved. Number two, efficient process. Submissions suggested that the current process is challenging for Warden New South Wales to manage, given the higher number of applications received per event. While there is also insufficient notice that an Inter Valley trade is opening with applicants to submit a transfer. And thirdly, transparency and predictability. The majority of submissions suggested that there was insufficient transparency around the transfer statistics and the broader process. So some take-home messages there on that Inter Valley trade. I know in previous years a number of our suppliers have jumped on that Inter Valley trade bandwagon but it'll be interesting to see whether there's a few changes come out of that process in the years ahead. In forwards trading this week, not a great deal of movement there. Still zone six in that Murray created at 105, which is the same as zone 10 MIL. If you're looking to carry a little bit of water over, no quotes at present on that Murray space with the expectation of close to 100% allocation for next season. Now, as always, if you'd like any more information on anything we've spoken about here today, please feel free to give me a call, 0488 594 We'll catch up again next week. Cheers.